Hey everyone, welcome to a special episode of Amplify. I'm your host, Sam Ashu, and today you and I are going to be talking about monkeypox. There's a lot of information out there in the media about monkeypox, and I'm sure you've probably read a lot of it, but today we're just going to hit the highlights so that there's a groundwork for what it is we're supposed to be looking for in the emergency department and how to protect ourselves. So, with all that in mind, let's do a quick review on the basics of monkeypox. It's a double-stranded DNA virus in the genus Orthopox virus. And in that same genus, very similarly related to monkeypox, is smallpox and cowpox. We're very familiar with smallpox historically, and that got eradicated back in the 1980s. But this particular virus, the monkeypox virus, was discovered in 1958. And it's named monkeypox because it was first discovered in monkeys. The first human case recorded was in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And Africa is still the primary reserve for the virus and where most of the cases occur on a regular basis. It is a zoonotic disease, meaning it's transmitted from animals to humans, with the primary reservoir being in monkeys, of course, but also in squirrels, gambian, poached rats, dormice, and different species of monkeys in Africa. The World Health Organization does track cases and types of monkeypox virus. There are two clads or two different lineages that are ancestrally related of the monkeypox virus. One comes from West Africa and is called the West African clad, and the other is the Congo Basin clad, which is the one primarily predominant in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Between the two, we know historically that the Congo version is actually more severe. It has a 10% fatality rate. Now, that's historical based on cases in the Congo, not based on cases elsewhere. The West African clad or strain or variation of this virus is milder. It's reported to have a fatality rate somewhere between 1% and 3%, depending on the source that you're looking at. And actually, this is the one that is now causing an outbreak where multiple cases have been reported all over the world. So there's a quick epidemiological summary. One last point to make here is the fact that the similarity between monkeypox and smallpox historically was beneficial to us. Back in the day when everyone was vaccinated for smallpox, because of how similar the two viruses were, the smallpox vaccine was actually 85% protective or efficacious in preventing monkeypox infection. And so there were very few outbreaks of this sort of monkeypox when everyone around was vaccinated for smallpox. Fast forward to 2022, when many of our adult population have never been vaccinated for smallpox because we eradicated that disease in the 1980s. Now, many of us have become susceptible to monkeypox. Although the primary reservoir is really in Africa, this is the thought for why there are more cases now than there used to be, according to the World Health Organization. So, yes, technically, if you have been vaccinated for smallpox, if you're uh, either working in the military or a first responder, and at the time of 9-11, you went ahead and got vaccinated through that program at that point, then yes, you do have some immunity to monkeypox virus, and that is going to be beneficial for you if there's an outbreak in your area or a patient that you encounter. For the rest of us, the smallpox vaccine is not something we've had, and so no, we don't have any innate protection against the virus. Okay, let's talk transmission. Monkeypox, like we mentioned before, is a zoonotic disease, so it's transmitted from animals to humans, and that's the primary method where most of the infections have occurred in the past. People come into contact with sick or dead animals, or they ingest poorly cooked meat from these infected animals, and then they become infected. There have been human-to-human transmission cases, According to the CDC, most of these are thought to occur primarily through large respiratory droplets, which generally can't travel more than a few feet and require prolonged face-to-face contact with someone. 
other human to human contact methods are thought to be things like direct contact with body fluids. Now, the monkeypox causes vesicles or these little tiny fluid filled blister like lesions that are look like chicken pox. They cover your whole body. And within these little vesicles is fluid that is infected with the virus. And so contact with this fluid certainly is a medium for spreading the infection. It's thought that contact with clothing or linens or beddings that are soaked in this fluid is also another method of contracting the disease. Now, we're in 2022, we're in this COVID pandemic that's now becoming endemic, and many of the symptoms of monkeypox are going to be quite familiar to us. In the initial one to three days of infection, the monkeypox virus causes fever, lymphadenopathy, back pain, headache, muscle aches, and fatigue. We know all of those symptoms because they sound like COVID, but in this case, they're not. The interesting thing is that about two to four weeks of rash occurs after the initial presentation, and the rash has a very specific course. It starts as small flat spots over the face that spread to the rest of the body, and these progress into raised bumps, and then vesicles or fluid-filled tiny blisters that become pustules, then they rupture, the fluid is released, and these things scab over, and it can take anywhere from two to four weeks to progress through this entire process. The rash generally begins on the face and then is spreading downward or away from the face to the trunk and the back and the abdomen from there. If you live somewhere that's endemic or has lots of monkey pox infection, the diagnosis is clinical. You look at the rash and say, yep, this is what you have. But if you live in other countries where there aren't any cases of monkeypox circulating, then testing is a little bit difficult. There are PCR tests that are available now through programs with the CDC and your local Department of Health. So if you have a suspected case, that's a reportable case to your Department of Health immediately so you can get your hands on the PCR testing materials necessary to make this diagnosis. Okay. When we're talking about treatment, it kind of goes hand in hand with prevention. We don't have a treatment known to be effective against monkeypox. There are antivirals, there is smallpox immunoglobulin, there are these other theoretical things that haven't been tested or approved yet by the CDC for treatment of monkeypox. But there is a vaccine. Specifically, the vaccine we used to use for smallpox went out of production in the 1980s after we eradicated that disease, but there is one that is still in production. It's the second generation of that vaccine. The original one was called Drivax, and that's not made anymore, but there is another one that's called ACAM2000, or ACAM2000. And it's made by Sanofi. It is technically still available as a smallpox vaccine. And like I said before, we know from historical epidemiological data that it is about 85% protective against severe monkeypox infection. A few years ago, the FDA approved a second vaccine. Now, the original smallpox vaccine was a live vaccine. So after being vaccinated, you would get a blister and that blister contained virus and that virus could be contagious to others. The second generation of that vaccine works in a similar method. So once again, you can get a blister at the location site of vaccination and that contains fluid that can be contagious to others. And so they just encourage you to keep it covered. The new vaccine was approved by the FDA in 2020 and is manufactured by Bavarian Nordic. It has what I assume is a Nordic name spelled J-Y-N-N-E-O-S, and I'm not going to try and pronounce it. But the new vaccine is approved for adults 18 and over. It's a two-dose instead of a single-dose vaccine, and it's a non-replicating attenuated virus. So what does that mean? That means when you get it, you're not going to get the blister filled with fluid that has live virus in it. You're not contagious to others. And this particular vaccine was tested against monkeypox in mice and other animals. And so we know from that data that it is also effective against monkeypox. 
Although the FDA approved it back in 2019-2020, the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is still reviewing all of this data and hasn't really made a recommendation about whether or not it's safe to use in the general population. Interestingly, there are several reports of the U.S. government buying millions and millions of doses of the vaccine. It is FDA approved. We know it is efficacious. It does work for smallpox and very likely based on the data that we have against monkeypox as well. Okay, so hopefully by now you're thinking, well, we have a vaccine, but how is that going to help me when it comes to treatment? And the answer is there is a long delay between when you first become infected and you start to show symptoms of monkeypox. So although you have a specific cluster of symptoms and a known disease progression, it can take a while, up to 21 days before you start to show symptoms. So if you've been exposed, you can still get vaccinated in an attempt to prevent you from developing the disease. And the CDC and public health organizations do something called ring vaccination, or vaccinating everyone around a known case in order to prevent it from spreading to others. So if there has been a case in your area, they'll do the typical contact tracing, which we're all accustomed to now because of COVID, and they'll discover who has been in prolonged direct contact with this person and maybe their body fluids and at risk for developing disease, and those people will be vaccinated. That's ring vaccination. If they can vaccinate everyone around this person who has been exposed, and that prevents it from spreading to the general population. If you are vaccinated in the first four days, that's got your best chance at preventing acute disease. But you can still be vaccinated on days four through 14 in the hope that it will reduce your disease severity. Currently, the CDC is recommending vaccination with the second-generation smallpox vaccine called ACAM2000 or ACAM2000. But but hopefully after they review this newer vaccine that is an attenuated non-replicating virus, they'll recommend that one instead. It will be a two-dose regimen instead of the current one-dose regimen, but it seems to have a better safety profile. One other population who may be vaccinated already are lab workers. So anyone who might come in contact with the virus because they're testing specimens is still recommended to also be vaccinated against smallpox. And so they may have already received this ACAM2000 vaccine. And that's what we know about monkeypox. There is a situation that's unfolding almost daily. We're up to, I think, over 100 cases now throughout the world in what they call non-endemic countries. So these are countries where you don't normally see monkeypox, and the cases are increasing as we go day to day. But the virus doesn't spread as fast as COVID. It is not as contagious as covid And thankfully, it requires contact with large respiratory droplets or the body fluid that's in the vesicles. So not as contagious, not as big a threat as COVID, but still something serious that's on everyone's radar, especially now that we're all hyper alert from what we've just been through and still going through with COVID. There are several excellent resources if you want more information. The CDC has its own monkeypox library of information. The World Health Organization has as well its own library of information on monkeypox and is tracking the international outbreak currently. And lastly, Johns Hopkins has its own monkeypox tracker. It's a spreadsheet where you can get the information about how many cases there are in the U.S. and how many are under investigation and how many are confirmed. So if that's something you enjoy doing, those resources are available to you, and they're all linked in the show notes as well as all of the information I just shared with you. So if you'd prefer to read it instead of listen to it, it will always be available there. And that's it. Hopefully this helps you. Until next time, be safe, everyone.